now you have completed an enterprise budget. And the question becomes, what do you do with this enterprise budget? Now you're going to use the enterprise budget as a tool for analysis. This is the now what? And the thing to remember is that knowledge is power. The enterprise budget is full of these key metrics inside the budget that we called them earlier intermediate calculations. These intermediate calculations are used to create targets and thresholds for analyzing performance. And once you have everything in a spreadsheet, all the calculations are trivial, absolutely trivial. They take just mere seconds to figure out. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a thing called the cost of production. That's our first goal to find the cost of production. Now the enterprise budget has it broken down in this case, this corn for grain operation. They have it broken down as the cost of production per acre. What we want to do is get the cost of production per bushel of corn. Sometimes we're going to call this the break even price. What this is, it's really simple. This is the amount of money you need to sell the corn for in order to actually make money growing corn. So if the price of corn is projected to be below this amount, you know you've got an obstacle you have to overcome. So here's a formula. The cost of production, aka the break-even price, is the total cost, the total amount of money you spent in that acre divided by your yield on that acre. Let's pop over to the spreadsheet and let's calculate that. Let's scroll down to the, our spreadsheet to the bottom. I like to put these at the bottom. You can put them anywhere you want in yours. I'm not aware of any format that says it has to be at a certain place. I wanna be really specific. I wanna call this my cost per bushel. This is also known as the break-even price. To calculate this, it's really straightforward. Type an equal sign. I'm in cell B35 of this spreadsheet. And my total expenses, the amount of money I spent on this acre of corn is hiding out in cell E32. Just click on E32, type a slash to divide, and then scroll up and find the yield I used, 125 bushels per acre, in order to build this spreadsheet. Hit enter, and we get a number, $3.50. So you need to get $3.50 at a minimum in order to break even on this operation. So if your budget projection is accurate and you're looking at the current environment and you're saying, hey, can I get $3.50 a bushel for my corn? If the answer to that is yes, then hey, that's good news. You can make money doing this. As I'm recording this right now, the price of the nearby corn contract up at the Chicago Board of Trade, the CME group is $6.75 a bushel. Now the source I used to get this original budget is a bit dated, so the production costs probably aren't very accurate. But if it is accurate, we're gonna be making some really good money on our corn crop. Okay, back to the spreadsheet. We know we've gotta make at least that much. Our next thing we're gonna look at is a thing called the contribution margin, also known as the margin or the contribution. So what this is telling us is it tells us each time we sell a bushel of corn, how much does that action of selling a bushel of corn contribute to our overhead, our direct or ownership cost and our profit. So this basically is looking at the shutdown point. Do we have enough money after we paid for our variable expenses, our operating expenses, to have some left over to cover the overhead and have some profit. So the contribution margin is just the price minus the average variable cost. So let's roll over here and see what we have. We have, well, first of all, in this budget right here is the income above variable cost. That's one of our intermediate calculations. That is a positive number, which means on a per acre basis, we know that our contribution per acre is more than our cost per acre. And what we're going to do here is we're breaking this down per unit. So let's scroll back down here and let's type contribution margin. And the contribution margin is just equal to the price that we plan on getting for our crop. And we're estimating $3.68 minus our average variable cost. To calculate that, we go to our total operating expense. That is the equivalent of our variable cost. We're going to click on that, do a slash to divide and divide by our yield. And we get $1.07. What's that mean? That means if we can grow one more bushel of corn on that acre, right? If we luck up and there's just one more bushel than we projected, that bushel is going to give us an extra dollar and seven per acre, right? The next thing is the break-even yield. The way you want to think about this is that you know your cost and you know your price. And if you know what you can sell it for and you know how much you're going to spend making it, you can use those two bits of information to answer the question, what is the lowest yield I can get and still make money on the farm? So let's calculate that real quick. So this is the break-even yield. In other words, what happens if the crop fails? How low can my yield drop and I still make money? And this is going to give us, again, a per acre number. 
So we take an equal sign to tell Excel we're doing a formula. We click on our total cost, also known as our total expenses, 438 bucks in this case, hiding out in cell E32, type a slash to divide. Then scroll up to the very top to our revenue section and divide that by the $3.68 that we think we might be able to get for the corn when we develop the budget. Press enter, we get a number, 119 bushels, right? We're projecting to grow 125 bushels. That's what we built our budget on. But if we fall short and we only grow 119 bushels, we can still break even. Honestly, I'm looking at that and what I see is that I don't have a lot of wiggle room. I've got to hit my yield projection with this budget because if I miss it by just a hair, then I'm not gonna make money on my operation. So there we go. There are some examples of intermediate calculations and some metrics that we can develop with our corn for grain enterprise budget. Check out this livestock budget for a second. One thing I wanna point out with this livestock budget, this is a per cow budget, by the way. If you look at this budget, you see that the enterprise produces more than one output. Here we have cull cows that we can sell off our cow calf operation. We have heifers, we have steers. We learned in the last video how you can hold back heifers and use them as replacement breeding stock to replace the cold cows. So what do you do when you've got a situation like this where you have multiple outputs? Well, let me give you an example. Let's imagine you're growing cotton. And when you grow cotton, you have two possible outputs. After you harvest the cotton, it goes to the cotton gin where they separate the lint from the seed. The lint is the actual fiber. The seed is, well, cotton seed. <laughs> it's used for things like cotton seed oil. Here's what you do. You do the exact same thing we did before. You've just got to make a little change. So what we've done here is we've taken the break-even condition, which is your revenue is equal to your cost, and we've modified the break-even condition. So the break-even condition happens when revenue equals cost. Revenue is just price times your output, your yield. So here we have two products. The L and the S stand for Lint and Seed. So price of Lint times the yield of Lint is your revenue from the cotton itself. Price of Seed times the yield of Seed is the revenue from the seed itself. And when this formula is true, you will be breaking even. Start by finding the break even price of the lint. And we do that by imagining, <laughs> assuming, if you would let me assume, that we know the price and the yield of the seed. So we, if we held the price and the yield of the seed constant, how would we then find out the break even price and the break even yield for the lint? So we start off with the formula and we plug in some numbers. Let's say that we know our total cost off our budget is $900. And let's say for the purposes of our budget, we're going to sell the seed for 15 cents and produce 1500 pounds of seed. We're going to plug those numbers into the formula. 0.15 times 1500 is 225. Then we subtract 225 from both sides of the formula and we get our cost minus the revenue from the byproduct. Next step, divide both sides by the yield. And if we happen to know the yield of the lint, we can just plug the numbers in and they'll give us a break-even price, vice versa. We can find the break-even yield for the lint. So if we know for sure what price we're gonna get, we can take that 675 number, divide it by the price of lint, and that will give us our break-even yield. Okay, what about our cattle budget, right? Well, <laughs> um, we have more than one item in the cattle budget. And so what you can do is calculate a break even for each of these. And so let's just do that as an example. So we're going to scroll down. We're going to find the break even steer price, Certerus Paribus. That's a Latin phrase that means holding everything else constant. And here's what we're going to do to figure that out. We're just trying to find the break even price. So we're going to take an equal sign. And let's do an open parentheses and we're going to click on our total expenses for running our operation. Type a dash to subtract. And then we're going to scroll up and we're going to subtract the revenue from the cold cows and the revenue from the heifers. And we'll do a close parentheses. And then we're going to divide it by the production of our steers, which is in pounds. So just a little bit of clarification on the way this budget is set up. The number here is 5.6. That's 5.6 hundredweight, also known as 560 pounds. And the way this budget is set up, that for every cow, we're going to produce 0.46 steers. What does that mean? That means if we had 100 cows, we would produce 46 steers. And that's used to account for the loss that you might have because sometimes your steers don't make it to the end. Sometimes they're lost at birth or lost while they're young calves. So we have to take that number 5.6 and we have to prorate it or 
discount it by that 0.46. So we're going to do D8, the weight of each individual animal, multiplied by the number of those individual animals you get per cow. So every cow is going to give you 0.46 steers. No, you can't make 0.46 steers, but if you had 100 cows, you'd have 46 steers. Close parentheses, hit enter, and we end up with a break-even price of 186.02. What does that mean? That means holding everything else constant, holding our expenses constant, holding the revenue we could get from the other revenue sources constant, that we need to sell our steers for $186 per 100 pounds or $1.86 a pound. Here's what I wanna show you. Uh, <laughs> if you look up in the budget, you can see that we're only estimating that we can get $1.60 per pound for these animals or $160 per 100 pounds, 160 per 100 weight. And well, we saw in the budget when we looked at it in a previous video that it was a loser. It wasn't going to make any money. And well, here's why. Either our expenses are too high or we're not selling them for a high enough price. So now we know that if we really want to make any money at this operation, we need to be getting more money for the steers, holding everything else constant. Let's lather, rinse, repeat. Let's calculate the break-even price for the heifers going to follow the exact same format. It's going to be equal to, open parentheses, our expenses, minus the revenue we get from our cold cows, minus the revenue we get from selling steers. Close parentheses, divided by the quantity of heifers that we produce, and that's going to be, open parentheses, 5.45, that's 5.45 hundred weight, or 5.45 hundred pounds, or 545 pounds multiplied by the number of heifer calves that we're going to get per mama cow, 0.34. Now, why is this 0.34 when the steers was 0.46? We answered that in another video, so hopefully you'll watch that video and you can piece that together. Let's close the parenthesis, let's press enter, and we see the break even price is $191 um, per hundredweight, or likewise $1.92 a pound. And of course, we're budgeting for $156 per hundred weight or $1.56 a pound. So we're way off target here, way off target. All right, lather, rinse, repeat. Let's do the same thing for our cold cows. Our total expenses to, to take care of this one single cow operation minus the revenue from the heifers minus the revenue from the steers. Let's not forget some parentheses here so that we can make our formula nice and neat. Divide that by 12.5 hundred weight or 1,250 pounds uh, per animal. Multiply that by 0.1, which is our cull rate. We're planning on culling one for every 10. That's a 10% cull rate. Press enter. What do we get? $115.80 per hundred weight or $1.15 a pound. Rounds up to $1.16. We're projecting to only get 63 cents a pound or $63 per hundred weight. So we see immediately that with the expenses that we have, the prices for livestock are not high enough for this to be a viable operation. Okay, off camera, I set up the next area to work on my spreadsheet. We're gonna find the break-even quantities for each of these three outputs I have in this operation. Same general setup equals open parentheses, our expense minus the revenue associated with the other thing. So I'm doing the steers. So minus the revenue for the heifer, minus the revenue for the cull cow, close the parentheses, divide by open parentheses. And now here is where people tend to trip up. What we're doing in this case is we're trying to find the break-even yield. And that's going to assume a very specific price, the price we use in our budget. The mistake students tend to make is they use the break-even prices we just calculated, these here. What we wanna do instead is use the prices in our budget. So in this case, 160 per 100 pounds. And of course, we're only selling 0.46 of these per cow. So we have to have that as well. Close the parentheses, hit enter. And what do we get? 649. What that tells us is that our animals have to weigh 64900 pounds or 649 rounding up. They need to weigh 650 pounds. So these things need to weigh 650 pounds for us to break even on them. We're projecting for them to weigh 560 pounds. So the problem here is that our steers 
aren't putting on enough weight. This is tricky because we either got to find a way to get them to gain weight faster and more efficient or keep them on feed longer. So what ends up happening is you keep them on feed longer, which means your expenses go up. So it's actually kind of tricky to get these things up to a higher weight, but we can clearly see that at the current prices, we need to sell heavier animals. We're not gonna make any money selling these things at this weight. Gonna do the exact same thing for the other two and I'll get back to you in a second and show you the result. Okay, we've got our result and so let's talk about it a little bit. What we see happening here is that our heifers now need to weigh 669 pounds, which is honestly a little bit absurd and our culled cows need to weigh almost 2,300 pounds. And what you've got to remember is that that culled cow is completely a byproduct. And so the problem with this last calculation is it's really kind of pointless because you need to view the culled cow as really kind of that byproduct. It's an extra thing that you can sell on top of it. And the issue here is you're not getting enough money or you're not adding enough weight to your primary product, the steers and the heifers. And that's the reason why that cold cow number is such a ridiculously high number. So this particular operation is a long way from really making any money. And so there's an example of what to do when you've got multiple products and you're trying to find the break-even price of those multiple products. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one.